Hey guys, I thought it was time to make a, a new video on how I make wax slugs uh, because I've made so many videos, the other ones are kind of buried. People often probably wonder how do you use these things, how do you make these things. So, here's a tool I've made. Okay, make sure I'm in the frame here. Yeah. And this tool, basically, it, it opens a shell, so it leaves it, so it leaves it with the crimp bead intact. And what I like to do is I like to open a box of 25 shells and rebox them, you know, so that when I get time I can do some waxers in a rapid manner. But I'm going to demonstrate this tool just because it's been a while, right? So you put the tool, you put it in there, and you just rotate it against the blade. Now this is a brand new tool. The more you use them, the easier they are to use. But what I do is I rotate it a bunch of times kind of to break it in when I'm testing these for customers before I start out. And then you can see I've got almost all the shot basically trapped in there. Here's the opened hull. Okay. And what I do is I like to trap all my shot and the little crimping thingies in here. So let's set that aside. We're done with that for a minute. I don't need to go on and on about something you guys have already seen, but here's the next thing I do, okay? Here's, I guess you guys can see that pretty good. This is a, an acrylic board I made with precision rounded holes, and it has a bevel on one side, which is this side. And you just press the shells into them so you can fill your whole grid board up with shells. doesn't take that long. I'm just kind of demonstrating this part. I'm going to try and keep the video relatively short. But anyway, imagine you filled your whole grid board up. Let me skip to the next bit here. Ta-da! Alright. So, here's 25 of them stuffed in the little holes. As you can see, they don't want to come out. Alright, so you flip the board over. The shells don't fall out. You just stay in the holes. Makes life easy. And if you do it on something that's perfectly flat, all the shells will be flush to the top. It doesn't really matter. The next step uh, is take your wax, whatever kind of wax you want to use. I like to use this wax because I made it. And you take an old can. This is this is nothing more than a can filled with shot. Shot that has been collected from many, many trimmings. Okay, I don't even know how much shot is in there. But if you did 25 rounds and you have all your shot, pour all your shot in here. Okay, in your nice can. All right. And there's the wax. Put some wax in there. In this case, I know this is exactly enough wax to make 25 rounds. And then I put the heat on medium on my electric range. You'll have to find your own settings, sir. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. You just put it right on the eye. Don't be afraid, man. Don't be smoking, either. It makes vapors that are explosive. So here is a spoon. And all I did was stick this in my vise, tighten down the vise, and I managed to make a funnel-like shape this grid board has seen uncounted un un uses. I can't even think of how many rounds I've made with this. As has this spoon. So if you get tools that you like, you can hang on to them. And they'll be there in your little box. I like to use a collection box because if you shake the shot, all the little plastic bits float up to the top and you can get them out of there. And then you just dump your shot in the can, throw in a puck of wax, and come back in five or ten minutes see what it's doing. Okay guys, it's time to capture some hot wax action. So, uh, I'll just focus on the uh, activity over here. I'm going to be using some uh, pads here because I don't want to scald myself. But basically, here's your 
Here's your hot Joe, ready to go. It is there. Just gonna see how much shot I've got. I have no idea how much shot is in there, but if you put all the shot from everything that you open in there, you will have a little shot left over each time. Then you can leave that in your wax can, and you will never, ever run out of shot. <laughs> this is where you don't want to be scalding yourself. Good. Now the top of the can is not smoking hot, you know, but it's not comfortable to hold either, and it's not easy to control it from up there because the thing's heavy. So I like to get a, a mitten up underneath it. I'm trying to capture this for you as best I can, but I like to start off with wax. Get myself a little spoon of wax in there, like some medicine for these babies. They're all got their mouths open wanting a spoonful of wax. Let's go all the way around and get all 25 of these puppies. Wax stays liquid for a long time so you don't have to rush. And Just try and be neat about it as best you can. You don't have to be super anal about it. You notice how I'm holding the mouth of my can over the grid board just to kind of minimize slop. And I just want the wax to go where I want it to go. Which is why I got the little bent spoon. careful you don't burn yourself even through one of these little mitts because if you hold this thing long enough it's going to uh, start to hurt. But you can see how fast you can run right along here and just get a primer of wax in each one of these babies. Let's go along. And what that does is any shot that sinks to the bottom is already going to be ready to be met by a big puddle of wax. Now, what I'm going for, I wish I was at the right angle to show you this better, but I'm going for a big scoop of shot with some wax in it. Like that. And then just go right there. I've got myself a little cap of wax there. Now, if I want to go crazy and I want to add more shot to it, I can. My little spoon can usually carry just enough shot to get the job done the way I want. Do, do enough of these. You better hope that you get some kind of a rhythm going. Because there's a little... You know, you got to be careful not to burn yourself with the wax. And make sure your wife doesn't find out what you've been doing in the kitchen. Make sure the kids don't come running in there and stick their fingers in the hot wax. You gotta keep the cat from jumping up on the counter. A lot of problems here. You can just get yourself a fifth element and do it out in your man cave. Where they can't get you. They can't slow you down. Wood, but my man cave is very dusty. Yeah. If you notice, the stuff stays liquid a pretty good long time here. So you have plenty of time to go back and touch things up. If you want to put more shot in something and just let the wax run over the top, don't worry about it. Let the wax run over. You can put some more shot in there if you want. It'll drop right into it. Better to have a waxy mess and not enough load in there to properly pop the milk jug or whatever it is your target is of the day. And I like to be able to see that shot right below the surface. I'm not worried about all this excess because what I do guys is I use a putty knife and I scrape it off into a box and I've got a big box of wax shavings that I melt down make loads like this. 
instead of using pucks, which I like to sell, not use. Anyway, as you see, I'm not really hurrying here, and I don't see any reason to hurry. You're, you're making ammunition, you're not in a race, necessarily. So, you, should, you should enjoy it, you should just kind of try and get a zen thing going where you're getting the right amount of shot, the right amount of wax, everything the way you want. And, uh, nothing wrong with the wax running over there. You just scrape it off and reuse it. It's also, I think, a good demonstration of how far one of those little pucks goes. One of those little pucks does 25 rounds, no problem. With waste, whatnot. A certain amount of whatnot involved at all times. Probably been blocking the view with my can. Hey, get your big can out of the way. Big can's blocking the view. I think I had quite as much shot as I would like in my can, but I'm okay with that. I can live with that. So, like I said, it's not a big deal. But I thought I'd make another video to show my process. Because a lot of people have been watching an extremely old video of me doing something, I guess, with crayons or something. So, look how much wax is left and from that puck from doing 25 rounds. And then you can scrape all the rest off. And if I had put more shot in there, I think I'd be happier. But I, see, the thing when you put in cold shot, what you can do, you can just drop some cold shot in there. But it's not the same. It's messy, or my BBs are bouncing off the wax surface for some reason. Anyway, no big deal. A couple light loads, but the rest of them will be fine. Now, you come back and, like, give them at least 15 minutes, guys. I know you're probably in a rush to jump out there and blow up some milk jugs, but 15 minutes and, you know, normal 70 type degree temperatures and should be congealed enough you should be able to pop them out of there without the destroying them. We'll come back to this. Okay, being patient is the hard part, right? Just waiting for the wax to cool down. But once it's done, we'll just flip them back over and you just pop them out. They're clean and ready to go. And uh, you can box them or whatever you like to do with them. But they all come out pretty much ready to go. These will run in a tubular magazine just fine. These will uh, not foul your breech or your bore. They may leave a little waxy residue on the follower in your tubular magazine. That's about it. It's no big deal, guys. You can do this. So I just thought I'd make this little thing. It doesn't take long. You know, I was fooling around and talking and all this kind of crap. If you were actually industriously working at it, you'd make a bunch of these in no time. But who wants to industriously work at a hobby like shooting wax slugs or your shotgun? But you could, if you're that sort of person. You could drink milk while you were doing it. Uh, unless, of course, you were lactose intolerant. Then you could drink milk while you were doing it on purpose, just to spite. We have Ox 25 waxers. No big deal, guys. Hope this helps. I uh, just wanted to show how the tools work. How the wax works. I'm going to recover all this lovely stuff and uh, melt it again. <laughs>